good morning and welcome to today's daily devotional. I am Pastor Tammy and I'm so glad that you're here. We're going to just kind of stall for a couple minutes while we wait for some more people to join us on this beautiful Wednesday morning. Um, it's only Wednesday. It is um, midweek and it's already been quite a week. And so um, I am actually in my bedroom and I am on my knees. And I've talked a lot in past devotionals about just um, the posture that we should have before God. And so I really felt like today I just needed to be on my knees. And we are going to start in prayer because I feel like our country is hurting right now and in need of healing and Jesus is the only one who can heal. So would you just please start today in prayer with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, I release it all to you. You are in control, Lord. You are sovereign. And you, Lord, are the one who heals. So, Lord, we humbly come before you on our knees and we ask you to heal this land. May your presence be felt right now, Lord, in a profound way. Amen. Good morning, those of you who've been logging on. Um, I'm Pastor Tammy as I said earlier, um, and I'm on my knees today because I feel like that's where we need to be. Um, we are still in the midst of a global pandemic and the country's opening up and the city's opening up and neighborhoods are opening up, but it's actually causing a lot of divide um, as some people want to get back to normal and other people still fear the danger um, and lines are being crossed and, and people are at odds with what that's going to look like. A black man was murdered at the hands of police officers last week and our country is mad and we should be. And that anger has um, instigated violence in some areas. Cities from coast to coast are protesting and 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 at times that protest protesting has led to violence and innocent police officers are being injured and it seems like every day the division in our country grows and widens and it's getting harder and harder to cross that divide but there is one man that I know that can cross any divide and in my Bible his words are written in red so that's where we're gonna go today if you have your Bibles open them up to John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35 a new command I give you love one another just as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. I know that these are familiar words to you, um, to so many of us, but here's my question. Who is the one another? That Jesus is talking about and why is this a new command Levitical law had mandated for centuries that we were to love one another Leviticus 19 18 says do not take revenge or bear a grudge against members of your community but love your neighbor as yourself so what made this a new command there are two things that makes John 
chapter 13, verses 34 and 35 knew. One is who Christ was calling us to love, calling the people to love, calling us to love who the one and others are. And the second thing is how we were called to love them. Because Christ was calling his people, he's calling us to love as he loves. You see, it's, it's easy, well, relatively speaking, it's easy to love the one another's who are around us, our family, the people living in the house next door, those with the same interests, the same perspective, the same beliefs and principles and moral values that we have. It is infinitely harder to love those who disagree with us. Those who choose to be more cautious than we would be or more risky than we would be. It is infinitely harder to love people who have very different life experiences than us that have led them to have different interests and perspectives and beliefs and values. Jesus knew that. He knew that we would have a hard time loving people who were different than us. So in Luke 6, 32, he says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do what is good to those who are good to you, what credit is that? Even sinners do that. But love your enemies. Do what is good and lend expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is gracious to the ungrateful and the evil. This is what made this a new command. This is what made John 13, 34 through 35 revolutionary. Because Jesus wasn't just calling God's people to love God's people. He was calling them to love everybody, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He was calling them to love the insiders and the outsiders. He was calling them to love the lovable and the not so lovable. He was calling them to love the strong and the weak, the rich and the poor, the powerful and the powerless. And we are to love them all too. We as God's people, as Christians, our love should know no boundaries, no limits, and no exclusions. We are to love them the way Jesus loved them. How did Jesus love? Instead of retribution, Jesus gave forgiveness to those who sinned against him. Instead of condemnation, Jesus gave compassion to a woman when she was caught in adultery. Instead of judgment, Jesus gave friendship and mentoring to shady tax collectors. Instead of ignoring and shunning lepers and the sick, Jesus embraced them and healed them. Instead of picking fights with the government of the land, Jesus healed their children. Jesus engaged with, had compassion on, and loved shady tax collectors, hermits, Roman governors, young children, repentant religious leaders, homemakers, lawyers, criminals, fishermen, kings, widows, Roman centurions, prophets, adulterous women, high councilmen, sick, rich, poor, blind, political leaders, outcasts, women, high priests, lepers, traitors, angry mobs, doubting followers, Samaritans, 
and even the people who hated him and had him killed. Jesus loved them all. Jesus' love was and is available to everyone. And we are to love as he did, with forgiveness instead of retribution, with compassion instead of condemnation, with friendship instead of hatred and judgment, with arms around each other rather than walls between each other, with healing words rather than instigating fights. And it is so important that we get this right, that Jesus said it was actually the second most important commandment in all of scripture. In Matthew 22, when he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? Without hesitation, he replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Here's the truth. We can only love our neighbors well when we get those other two things right. When we love God first, and when we love ourselves appropriately. If we get either of those two things wrong, we will not be able to love our neighbors well. We must love God first. He is first always, and we have to love him with everything that we have, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. He is our source of hope, he is our source of truth, he is our source of healing, and he is our source of justice. God must come first. And we must model the love that he has given to us. It has to start there, with God first. But we also have to love ourselves appropriately. We must put ourselves in the proper place in this equation. God first, others second, and ourselves third. Paul reminds us in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3-8, through, through eight, that we should do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than ourselves. Not looking to our own interests, but to the interests of others. In our relationships with one another, and remember who the one another is. It's everybody else. In our relationships with one another, we, have, we are to have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. What was Christ's mindset? He goes on to describe it. Christ, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Christ's inherent place, he was not going to use for his own advantage. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a slave taking on the likeness of man in his external form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Christ, who is in the very nature God, did not use that to his own advantage. He didn't use what he had been given since the beginning of time for his own advantage, but he gave that up to stand with us. And we are to have that same mindset. That is how we are to think of ourselves. And when we take on that mindset of Christ, only then can we love our neighbors well. 
I don't have a now go do this for you today because I don't know what that looks like for you. I only know that I'm supposed to obey the words in red. And in my Bible, those words tell me to love one another just as Christ has loved me. And when I love that way, people will know that I'm his disciple. Let's pray. Lord, I want to be your disciple. I want to obey you and the words that you spoke. And Lord, that means that I need to put myself aside. My own rights and my own privileges and my own advantage. And I need to stand on truth. And I need to love everybody, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so, Lord, I commit to do that before you today. Show me how you want me to love. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys. Um, join us back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. for our daily devotional with Pastor Todd. And go out and love well today. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.